In the last two videos, we looked at naive Bayes and we also looked at an example to understand naive Bayes better. In this video, we will look at some of the subtleties of using the naive Bayes classifier, some modeling considerations to keep in mind. The first and the most important one is that oftentimes data do not comply with the naive Bayes assumption, which is that the features are not conditionally independent given the class variable. So the naive Bayes assumption, the naive Bayes classifier relies solely on the naive Bayes assumption and that assumption which we have marked here. So this one may not be valid. And if that is not valid, then that would cause your prediction to be inaccurate and have less performance overall and um, you, it's not very desirable. And it is a simplifying up assumption when you think about it that we want each and every feature to be conditionally independent given the class variable and that is unlikely to happen in the real world. Features often are correlated and their values depend on each other and uh, this can be violated more often um, than you think. And uh, but still, even with the assumption, naive Bayes performs quite well, and that's why it is still popularly used. And why it works, why it works despite having such a simplifying assumption, is because we only need the probability of the current class to be the largest. We don't care how large it is. It only has to come out on top, but we don't care about the difference. For example, in two-way classification, anything more than 0.5, as, as low as 0.51 would be enough for our uh, classifier to pick uh, that as the class that uh, comes out on top. So it does not need to have this value of 0.95 or have, I mean, predict this with a high confidence. It's not necessarily required. And that sometimes works in our favor because um, as long as we come out on top, as long as the class that we want comes out on top, we are still okay. We still uh, will get a really good prediction accuracy. And that's one of the reasons why naive Bayes often performs well in uh, a real world setting, even with this simplifying assumption. Another naive Bayes uh, problem here that you will all um, often notice is that there aren't enough training instances to calculate all the different probabilities. For example, you have never seen a training instance with x1 equal to a and y equal to b. One, some combination you have not seen in the training data, but at test time, that is the instance that you are required to compute uh, the prediction class for. For example, uh, let's say you did not see the word country in spam. Uh, if the word country never occurred in spam, then the probability of that of x1 equal to country and y equal to spam will be equal to zero and that is bad zeros are bad right because when multiplied with any other number zero would give a zero and that means that you the probability the entire probability value will be equal to zero no matter what these other values are so no matter what these other values are uh, with what words they are and what values they amount to they, if they, you multiply that with a zero, you will get a zero. And uh, that would give you a, such an inaccurate estimate of the probability and we'll soon see how to handle that. But this is another big problem that exists in uh, naive base. Another thing to note here is that when we calculate the, the values, we calculate for each feature and class combination. So 
we know just by intuition that some words in spam such as maybe lottery would never uh, may not ever occur in a ham um example so which means that these the, there could be words that are exclusively used for these classes and they may not occur in the other class and then their value would be zero so this problem right here what we're discussing occurs more often than you think because the word country in spam never almost never occurs let's say that there could be such a word but never occurs in a spam message and similarly there could be a word which um, that occurs only in spam and does not occur in or occurs very rarely in ham so this when that happens then you will get zeros and when you get one zero if one of these x1 or x2 x3 xn any of those if one of those are zero like that does not occur in combination with a particular class value um, then that will be zero and multiply that multiplies with with all other values and will produce a zero and that is completely useless that renders the whole calculation useless and you will be left out with no way to predict which one which class is the correct prediction class. In the next lecture, we will look at how to handle this specific problem of zeros. And um, especially in text data, this is way more common. So we'll also look at a text example.